we will wait for a while. We'll wait for a while, um, then we will start officially this meeting, just two minutes more to get everyone involved here and then we're gonna start the event accordingly. So be patient with us and keep your mic muted, please. Thank you. Hello everyone, uh, this is Sayyid Mazhar, Chair for the IOSH UAE branch. Uh, on behalf of my committee, I'm really thankful to all of you, those are attending the event and those have registered for this event. Uh, it is indeed a pleasure moment for us when we have approximately 450 registration across uh, the Middle East. Um, we are thankful for the other branches as well. Those are calibrating with us and making this event one of the fantastic event. Uh, this is our fourth branch meeting. Uh, before we start, I would like to request you to please keep your mic mute. Uh, during the session, uh, please, if you have any query, any question, please write down into the question and answer box or write down into the chat box. And at the end of the session, uh, the speaker of the event or my communication coordinator, Mr. Asif, will get all of your questions and will convey to the speaker and he will give you the answers. During this session, any interruptions due to the internet, please be patient with us. We will come back accordingly. Um, I believe my voice is clear and my picture is clear to everyone. I need few evidences, just raise hand, few evidences that yes, the voice is clear and the picture is clear so we can run the show accordingly. Any few sh shake hands, please. Thank you very much. Puram, Shezad, Hawaii, Y9A. Okay, Amir, Arshid Islam. Thank you very much guys uh, for joining us. I would like to call upon uh, our speaker, uh, which is Mr. Shahzad. Uh, today's topic is obviously one of the interesting uh, topic for all of us. Uh, we've been to the, the HSC topics a lot, uh, but this time we have brought a topic for you which is relevant to the health and safety, but in somehow it is uh, very interesting for the people, um, those are having disability. So, so it is good for us to have some sort of awareness of the disability uh, because the session name is People of Determination. So I think it is one of the interesting event and you all will enjoy it definitely. So I'll hand over this to uh, Mr. Shahzad uh, to run and to put his presentation on and continue please. Thank you very much everyone. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good evening, everyone. I hope all is well with you guys. Uh, first of all, I want to express my gratitude to IOS UAE for uh, giving me an opportunity to speak about people with disability. Um, it's indeed a pleasure to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Shezad Ahmed. I'm a corporate health and safety trainer at Probstone. 
Uh, we are based in Abu Dhabi, UAE. I want to sincerely thank each and each one of you that you joined this event. And inshallah, looking forward, it will be interesting. Uh, I would not like to make such a long time of you guys, but it will be almost like 40 to 45 minutes. I hope so you will enjoy this session. So right now I'm going to share my screen. Uh, once you are able to see uh, my screen, then please uh, do let me know. So here we go. So guys, uh, can you see my screen? Just say me yes, sir. any one of you? Okay, good. So as Mr. Uh, Sayed, um, I was chair, he said that we have an interesting topic today. It's a quite, uh, not really into the HSC that much, but still um, it's it's interesting one. So you can see here, the topic is people of determination awareness. So as you can see, we will be covering these things. Uh, I will try my best to cover all these things in the training. Now, um, from the start, if you can see, the international symbol of Axis is also known as the wheelchair symbol. It was designed by a Danish design student named Susan Koipe. And uh, I hope so you have seen this symbol in various places in many locations. And it consists of a blue square will laid in white with stylus image of the person in the wheelchair. So that was the major accomplishment in both design and function. And her origin of this symbol was first presented in 1968 competition sponsored by the Rehabilitation International and the International Standard Organization. So this is something a little about the history. Um, the symbol, it came into being in 1969 actually, okay? And uh, Suzanne Coffey, she presented this symbol and basically she won the award for this. Uh, I have put also the two pictures at bottom of the slide. You can also see those two pictures. So she won the award for this symbol. And uh, now, if you just notice down from 1968 till now, it's almost around 50 plus years. So still it's a huge time. So some disability activists, um, Sarah and Brian Glenny, they compounded the new accessible icon project. So the version of this symbol is officially used now in the United States of New York and Connecticut. So basically they redesigned the symbol. Now, if you can see at the bottom, basically we have two symbols for the disability. Now, if you can see the first picture and you can see on the second picture. So I'm sure that 95% of you guys have seen the second one, which is uh, the old logo. And the next one, the first one, which we call the updated dynamic accessibility symbol. So they basically uh, reintroduced the symbol. Now, there is always a message in each and every symbol or in each or even uh, in, in any logo. So uh, what does this uh, thing or what does this symbol indicate us? It is actually indicating their mobility and that they are in control of where they are going. I'm talking about this re-updated symbol. So the new design of Pixar uh, is the individual with their arms back, once again, indicating that they are in dynamic and in control of their own mobility. So how UAE sees the people of determination, basically in the UAE, people with disabilities are referred as people of determination. And let me tell you guys, this is international accepted and recognized symbol. And you have to keep one thing in mind. Whenever we are going to see this symbol, uh, it does not mean that it will be only for one disability. Uh, various type of disability is part of this event, okay? We will discuss that in the next few slides. But let me tell you guys, uh, this logo or this symbol is basically indicating all type of disability. It's not only about the physical disability. And uh, it symbolizes that people of determination are party motivating members. You know. Like we have to think about the people with challenges. Sometimes we call them people with challenges. Sometimes we call them people of determination, special people, special guests, because why they are part of our community, they pay taxes, they are volunteer, they're part of the government. And most importantly, they are the nation pillar, or you can say they are the nation strength. And the aim of this uh, webinar was actually for one thing, they, they are part of our group and they have to be with us and we are from them. 
So the hand movement is also very different from the old logo. If you can see here, the moving hand that pushes the wheelchair is a symbol of initiative, self-reliance, and a desired work toward progress and accomplishment. So as uh, on behalf of the IOC UAE, it was very important because as per the Ministry of Community Development, and uh, they are going to push us to use this new logo. So uh, if you can see a person is sitting on the wheelchair, he's trying to do, he's trying to move ahead. It means that it does not mean that they will only stick or they are only confined to the wheelchair. No, they are part of the community and they are moving ahead. And disability awareness, of course, it's very important, is the practice of knowing them, acknowledging them and accepting individual experiences as they relate to the disability. Knowing being aware or moving beyond your own level of comfort is a key to greater understanding as well. So disability awareness is indeed very important for all of us to know. And uh, that is actually even the aim of this training as well. Let's come back to the uh, definition, okay? And how we can define disability. First of all, a disability may be generally uh, defined as you can see. I will not go into the quite detail, but let me pick the most important thing. Um, it restricts the person's mental, sensory, or mobility function to undertake or perform tasks in the same way as a person who does not have disability. Uh, it is very really hard for the people with challenges to carry out their normal day-to-day -day activity because why they are having a different challenges. And people are often mistaken that the word disable associates with someone who is in wheelchair or who is blind or deaf. They have attitude that the people with disability are totally different, but it's not like that. Uh, we don't need to consider them different. They are same like us. And unfortunately, this kind of stereotype is actually itself a form of discrimination. So uh, the most important thing, uh, you know, sometimes calling someone disabled is also a rude or harsh. We have to call them some special people, some special guests. And I think as UAE is suggesting us to uh, go with people of determination, so that is quite soft and you can see quite respected work. Because calling someone, uh, you are blind, you are deaf, you're confined to the wheelchair, it is something which is very harsh, you know? So this is kind of discrimination. And um, we don't have to think in that way, like they will be different and they need to be treated differently, no. By end of the day, all are human beings. Statistic, as for the WHO, like most of us, when we see people in the surrounding, for example, if they are using the wheelchair, or let's say they are blind, they are using the glasses, right, or some of them. Um, so we think only that they are the people with challenges, but no. Uh, you may not see disabled people in your everyday life. And yet the World Health Organization has identified over 1 billion over 1 billion disabled people. It means it's a huge number. And 20% of whom live with great functional difficulties in their day-to-day -day life. As in next few slide, I'll let you know, but let me tell you, disability does not mean only the physical disability. There are so many hidden disabilities that we don't see. And there are a lot of people, they are not welcoming to let the people that I have this kind of challenge. So still, if you can see the number, it's a huge number. A few outstanding figures of disability around the world, according to the WHO report. 23, 253 million people are affected by some of form of blindness and visual impairment. So it represents 3.2% of the world population. And 466 million people have disabling deafness in the hearing loss. And if you'll see about 200 people, 200 million people, sorry, um, have an intellectual disability and their IQ is below than 75. And this represents 2.6% of the world population. And 75 million people need a wheelchair on a daily basis. It means it is 1% of the world population. So statistic is quite alarming. Physical disability, okay? That is on number first. So physical disability is substantial and long-term condition affecting a part of person's body that impairs and limits their physical functioning, mobility, stamina, or dexterity. And let me tell you, this disability could be caused by birth deformity, certain diseases, broken bones, or amputation. I mean, like, if you will see, anybody can have a physical disability. God forbid, if someone will have an accident, they could be disabled for the whole life, okay? And it could be because of some certain disease, like cardiovascular disease. And recently, I was just watching through uh, one of the guides. They were saying that high diabetes can also lead you into disability or any, any other certain disease as well. 
So you can see that people with disability often need equipment such as crutches, wheelchair, and other assistive aids to be able to move around. The technology is getting advanced nowadays. They are introducing so many things for their ease. Uh, but most importantly, if we can see in the surrounding, that is the wheelchair. So people of determination with physical disability, associability and safety are the important issues. And um, yeah, we will discuss those things that how we have to treat the people who are using the wheelchair in the next few slides. Hearing impairment, okay? So it's also one of the type of disability, a malfunction in the hearing nervous system, which means hearing is lost, which limits the use of the verbal communication. The individual will use other means of communication such as sound languages and hearing loss will be more than 90 dB for common hearing loss. People can be born deaf or become deaf. And um, there are people who are using different sound language. It depends also on the community and also on the area. Uh, mostly people, they prefer American sign language. Some people, they prefer British sign language. And when it comes to the Gulf region, so you will see a lot of people, they are using the American sign languages. Along with that, we have also the Arabic language sign. So sign language is a way that we can communicate with people who are having the deafness. Hard of hearing. So variable or fixed hearing loss, which affects the method of communication through dependence on hearing devices, such as source of hearing. There are the degrees of hearing loss starting from 26 to 90 dB. So people can be born with the hearing impairment or become hearing impaired. So we can also guess from this that it could also be genetic or it could be naturally, uh, it could happen as well. Visually impaired, uh, loss of sight ranges. Now let's go straight into the categorization, blindness, Completely or nearly complete vision loss to less than 20 degrees, even with the glass used, okay? Partially sighted, where the visual acuity in the best causes reaches six by 60 or less in the dominant eye. Low vision, partial loss of sight in the dominant eye, which cannot be compensated with spectacles or lenses or medication or surgeries, where the severity differ from one person to the another person. Uh, actually, I'm rushing a bit quick in the types of disability because the aim of this training is to how to treat and how to interact the people with disability, which is the main concern. I'm going to cover that thing in the event as well. And um, multiple disability, multiple by the name we can easily guess. A person with a disability which falls under one of the following categories, neuro neurodevelopmental disorder, sensory disorder, physio, psycho-emotional disorder, accompanied by another disability, which falls under another category such as intellectual and physically uh, disability together, or hearing impairment and intellectually uh, disability together. Um, this does not include hearing and visual impairments together as they fall under the sensory disability. And this disability affects a person's development and education performance directly, which makes it difficult for a person to join special programs, which are not for the multiple disability. And um, deaf blind disability, as we know, it's also one of the multiple ones. Losing hair and sight together, it's a sensory disability. I mean, these senses are not working, so that's why we are giving the name a sensory disability, which leads to profound needs in communication, developmental and other educational needs, which cannot be provided solely through special education programs running to the blind or hearing impaired. And sometimes it's also called the dual sensory loss or multi-sensory impairment as well. A deaf blind person won't use, uh, will be totally deaf and totally blind, but both senses will be reduced in a to cause significant difficulties in the life. Um, these are the neuro neurodevelopmental disorder. I have given the name like one, two, three, four, five, six. The first one is indicating us the intellectual disability. The second one is specific learning disorder. Autism is on number third. Fourth is attention deficit or hyperactive disorder. Number fifth is the communication disorder. And finally, the number six, you can see, <clears throat> it's called the psycho-emotional disorder. Intellectual disability, it is related to our brain. So a disorder which start during the developmental period that includes both intellectual and adoptive functioning deficit in the conceptual, social, and practical domain. And deficit in the intellectual function confirmed by both clinical assessment and standardized intelligent testing. And a deficit in adoptive functioning that result failure to meet development and social cultural standard for personal, independence and social responsibility, possibly in one or more daily activities. Specific learning disorder, okay. 
a disorder in one or more of the basic psychological process, including an understanding or use the language both oral and written, uh, which appear in the inability to listen, think, read, write, spell, perform calculation, including cognitive disability, for example, dyslexia. I think these are mostly diagnosed by the um, school uh, teachers because uh, mostly we have seen this kind of disorder in the, in the child or the kids or even by their parents. And uh, it's very important for us to consult the doctor because uh, it's not uh, it's not a harm, it's not a crime. Someone has this uh, form of disabilities or these challenges. Uh, I think in the next few slides, I have kept some of the celebrity along with the uh, challenges, so which will give you the idea. There there are so many people who have been through these processes, but as I told you, this is not a harm or this is not a crime. These are something which is natural. These could be by birth and these things. But um, the doctors are suggesting that these things can be uh, treated with the passage of time if we uh, give them a proper training or a proper treatment. So um, it's not a harm. Autism and neuro neurodevelopmental disorder that is caused by a malfunction in the CNS, which called the central nervous system. Uh, which impacts the development of sensory and linguistic perception, hence the ability to communicate, speak, learn, and interact socially. Uh, I think I need to go with the uh, communication. Okay, disability etiquette. This is one of the most important thing for all of us. And uh, I need to be on the track with this topic. Communicating with a person with disability can seem daunting to some. Some people are concerned that they will embarrass this themselves or a person with disability by saying or doing the thing wrong. So these concerns usually come from a good place. It is entirely unnecessary. The most important thing to remember is to treat each person with respect. The basic tips for each and everyone. Avoid asking personal questions about someone's disability because it seems quite awkward, it seems quite rude, and we will never, we will try that these things should be avoided. So please make sure we have to avoid asking personal questions about someone's disability. Be concentrate of the extra time it might take for a person to do or say something. As we discussed that people could be having some problem with their communication. It does not mean that you have to show yourself that you are in a hurry. Just be patient, give them time. Maybe they want to ask something which is very important. And uh, I'll also suggest you, if you think it is possible for the people with challenges that they can write something for you on the paper, please present the paper with, uh, with a pen or anything and let them ask or let them write what they need exactly. Be polite and patient when offering assistance. This is the most important thing we have to keep in mind. Whenever we see the people with challenges, please do not go for the help directly. Because why sometimes they want to do a thing by their own. So let's say if you're not asking them for the help and you're asking uh, and you're doing something directly and they're not aware of it, I think this is not good. So please polite and ask for the help. This is one of the most important thing. Please do ask for the help before you, you go in that way. Listen or ask for the specific instruction. Be prepared for your offer to be refused. Like uh, in this way, for example, uh, there are people who are using the service dog, right? And uh, let's say the crutches, okay? And even the wheelchair. Uh, Sometimes they don't feel comfortable if you touch those assistive devices because why they consider those things to be a part of your body. For example, if I'm going to, if, if I'm a person with disability, I'm a blind, okay? I have some visual impairment and I'm not allowing you to touch my service dog. It does not mean I have some personal issues with you. Please just make it light because why? Because sometimes they don't feel comfortable. Relax, anyone can make mistake. And if you think that you committed something which is very wrong, you realize that. So uh, please make sure you just go for an apology and I'm sure that the situation can be sorted out. Keep a sense of humor and be willing to communicate. Make sure uh, just a sense of humor here, I would say, uh, they don't go for the direct thing which can harm them. Please try to spend a little bit time with them and as per their nature, you can make some sense of humor. Otherwise, they can uh, mind it. And uh, you can see here the three columns, okay? And 
you can see the disability, the outdated language, respectful language. We have to focus on the one column, basically, most of the uh, respectful language, okay? Now, um, because why our word matters? Blind are visually impairment. That is the disability. And what is the outdated language? Dumb, invalid. Man, we have to give them respect. Blind, visually impaired, person who is blind or visually impaired. Deaf or hearing impairment. So the outdated language. We have to avoid the outdated language, okay? Uh, invalid, deaf and dumb, deaf, mute, deaf or hard of hearing. Always we have to keep the people first. Okay, before the disability, we have to keep the people first. Okay, and speech communication disability. Dumb who, who talks bad, man, it, it seems very harsh. No one talks bad, they have some issue with the communication. So, person with a speech communication disability, someone has a learning disability, does not mean that you don't have to understand the ability. And we have to focus on the ability, not disability. We don't have to call them retarded, slow brain damage or stuff like that. Learning disability, cognitive disability, a person with learning or cognitive disability. When it comes to the mental health disability and the outdated language, outdated, it, it means here that this is something which is way unacceptable. No need to call them hypersensitive or psycho crazy, insane, wakunat, no. Person with psychotic disability, person with a mental health disability. I think we have also one more column on the next page here. Disability, mobility, physical disability, okay. And handicap, physically challenged, specially deformed, crippled, um, wheelchair bound, lame, no, not like that. Wheelchair user, physically disabled, person with mobility or physical disability, or even you can call them people of determination, special people, special guests emotional disability i think being an emotion being someone who is quite are getting emotion is not a disability okay emotionally disturbed man it is not quite acceptable the respectful language is emotionally disabled person with an emotional disability okay cognitive which you call the hidden one retard mentally retarded special ed cognitive developmentally disabled person with a cognitive developmental disability no need to call someone dwarf admitted, short stature, little person is a disability. Someone of a short stature, a little person. Health condition, and now in outdated language, victim, someone stricken with a disability that is someone stricken with cancer or an AIDS victim, no, survivor. Someone living with a special or specific disability that is someone living with a cancer or AIDS. We have to keep the people first. And you may really care or you may just be curious about a person with a disability who's in crisis, suddenly ill or misses work for an unexplained reason. In spite of your concern, please respect the privacy of person with disability. Allow them to discuss their situation if and when they feel comfortable doing so. Now, uh, how to treat someone, uh, how to treat a people with challenges if they are using the wheelchair? People who use the wheelchair have different disabilities and varying abilities. Some can use their arms and hands, okay? And some can get out of their wheelchair or scooter, or even walk for the shorter distance, okay? So do not push or test a person wheelchair. It is part of their personal says I mentioned a bit earlier, we don't have to touch, we don't have to push. You don't have to make play with those assistive devices, never, because um, it is something which is quite awkward. Don't lean over someone who uses a wheelchair to shake another person's hand or ask a wheelchair user to hold pose. And don't ask how fast the wheelchair goes or make another night remark. And please make sure if you can keep an eye contact, you can just uh, bone your knee and you can make your eye level. I think that will be quite better. For example, if you think that the person has challenges and it's quite hard that you are you're standing there. No, just come in a way that uh, you sit in a quite comfortable way and please make sure, make the eye level. I think that would be much better. And that is how they can get that, the way that you are treating them. Now, uh, deafness versus hearing loss, okay? Uh, as I told a bit earlier, some people they use ASL, we call American Sign Language. Some people use British Sign Language. So when using a sign language interpreter, See, the most important thing when you see that the person is using sign language. So please do not 
give 100% focus on the interpreter. No, because while the person who has the challenges, let's say if I'm on a wheelchair, I have interpreter, okay? And you are not focusing on me, you are focusing on the interpreter. So I can take those things on my heart and I can do mine there, okay? So please make sure you have to focus on the person as well and also the interpreter as well, both. Uh, if you think, if you can see that the person is trying to read your lips, please make sure you need to be quite slow, that at least he needs to get the thing, what you want to say exactly. Rephrase rather than repeat. Sentences the person uh, does not understand. And before speaking to the person who is deaf or has lost appearance, make sure that you get the, the attention. Getting the attention is very important. And that's how it is a way that you are showing them respect rather than evading. Blind versus low vision, okay? Identify yourself before you make a physical contact with a person who is blind. Offer your arm as a guide. Do not grab there. This is very important. You have to give them help. Just offer your arm. If the person has a guide dog, work on the side opposite the dog. Um, I think in, in a girl's vision, you might not see a lot of things because as I have the idea that here in the UAE, in many hotel sector, they, uh, they are not entertaining the services of the dog, but I think they have some special places where like they go for the test, first of all, and that that's how they allow the service dog for the people with challenges. Uh, but uh, yeah, if, if the person has a guide dog, walk on the side opposite the dog, this is important. As you're walking, describe the sitting and not any obstacle. I mean, like you have to let them know about the environment so he will not feel alone. And do not touch the person cane, whether they are holding it or not. Offer to read written information to a person who is uh, blind. And um, yeah, you can see Stephen Hawking were there. <laughs> Give the person your full attention. Don't interrupt or finish the person's sentences. You need to give them time. Like if a person say, uh, I, I need water, and you just tell them, you need water? No, it's not good. Let the person finish first. Okay, because why? They will think that yes, the person is basically giving me respect. But if you are going to cut him in the middle, I think this is something which you are uh, disrespecting the person. If you have trouble understanding, don't know, just ask him to repeat. Don't say yes, sir. No, please make sure you need to 100% understand the thing whenever it comes to the help. If you're not sure, so you can repeat for the replication as well. And if you have tried and still cannot understand the person and possible, ask them to write. If you think that you cannot understand the communication, so, and it is possible, please let him uh, the paper and uh, he can write the thing for you. Now, uh, these two gentlemen at the, um, you can say at the bottom of the presentation, I'm sure you guys will be aware of them. Uh, one is from the, uh, he's the Australian motivational speaker. He has a tetra amelia syndrome, which means a person without limbs, no hands, no legs, and the other guy, you might have seen in the Game of Thrones. <laughs> okay, so do not treat the person of a short stature, like in, in, in a way like a, you are a child, like, you know, make sure you need to know, treat adults as adults, treat kids as kids. If you're going to make fun of the person that he's already an adult and you're just, giving him in a way that you are a kid or a child, I think this is not the right way. Never paid or kiss a person of short stature on the hand. Adjust yourself so that you can make an eye contact without the person straining their neck. I mean, you have to let them be comfortable. And um, people with intellectual disability learn slowly, okay? So speak to the person in a clear sentences using simple words and concrete rather than abstract or concept. You need to make sure that uh, the thing should be in a quite easy, you can say, comprehension so he can understand the thing. Don't use baby talk or talk down to the people who have developmental disability. They are adults. As I said, adults are adults and kids are kids. Gauge the pace, complexity, and vocabulary of your speech according to yours. Be patient and allow the person to take their time. Help keep their routines to manage work and daily living. And let me watch my phone for a while. That what is the time now? The time is 5:34. And let me see how much we are here. Okay. Now, so uh, recap: um, this webinar has addressed several topics in concern when talking about disability awareness. 
There are the few key points to take with you. Not all disabilities are visible, okay? And each person has their own experiences. If you do not know how or if to help someone, please make sure we need to ask. And your word matters. Please choose them carefully. So um, yes, this was the main aim of our webinar was like uh, there are people with challenges. We have were millions and billions of people with different kinds of disabilities in our surrounding. And there are a lot of people who don't understand how to interact with people with disability. And if we want to show them respect, just focus on their ability, not disability. And if someone is blind, it does not mean they are deaf. If someone is deaf, it does not mean they're blind, okay? And as before, you wanna help someone. Sometimes, because these are the, um, they're quite emotional people, you know? And let's say sometimes they want to do their help by their own. For example, if I'm trying to open the door for myself and from somewhere you come and you open the door for me. So I don't have any other support to hold myself so I can fall down. So um, yeah, even if you're gonna ask them, so of course they're part of our the nation, they are part of your, your community, they are your strength. And um, in, even in UAE, we have the two laws for the people with determination. And uh, UAE, um, UAE are a different part of the world. They are respecting the people, WHO is there and uh, they have the proper rights. And um, many organization even I have seen here, that uh, they are giving opportunity to the people with challenges. You don't have to underestimate them. You have to give them jobs as per their disability or as per their challenges. And um, that was uh, the aim of our training, okay? The aim of this webinar was like that, that uh, this was uh, for the people with challenges because imagine if we have someone in our relatives how would you want them to be treated or how you would want the society to treat them? Of course, the one thing that comes in our mind that is respect. And um, I will hand over to uh, Mr. Asif. I'm sure he's here. And so Mr. Asif, uh, that is it from my side and uh, we have any questions? Thank you very much, uh, Shahzad. It was really a comprehensive, a great session. Thank and I uh, uh, hope uh, people enjoyed it. We have a couple of questions from yeah. uh, the attendees. The first question is, what about uh, congenital and hereditary disorders? Are there any legal covers for the people suffering from such disorders if detected in organization? Uh, see, as for my knowledge, okay, the first thing is whenever you are going to join the organization, so it is indeed very important, even in a law, that you must need to represent what you have. For example, if someone has an epilepsy, please, you don't have to make it high, okay? Epilepsy is also one of the disability, okay? And please make sure whenever it comes to the uh, cognitive, or you can say the head and disability, please, you must need to let your organization know before your medical document should be there that, sir or oh, ma'am, I have this kind of challenges and I'm on medication and I'm going to see the doctor. So I think the people in that community, the people in that organization can let you understand better, but it is very important that you need to let them know. And I think this is a quite a, a honest deal from the government that please make sure you need to show your challenges when it comes to the organization. As I said, like epilepsy, if I'm a driver, okay? And uh, I'm, first of all, it's not allowed for the people with epilepsy to take the driving licenses because you know, you are having a lot of people with you. So so make sure these kind of things you need to let your organization know because the head and disabilities is something which is very important and only like we can like i cannot judge or not nor the the person can judge directly your head and disability so you are the one you have to represent this challenges to your organization and the doctor or the treatment can be uh, done with the passage of time but as an organization perspective of course they will take care of you Thank you very much. We have one more question. Is stunted growth or autism as mentioned in the session is condition or disability? And if it is disability, then what will be the consideration in this regard? Um, it is a condition actually, okay? It's not a complete disability, it's, uh, it's a condition. And for the autism, um, there are some, if you'll see here in the UAE or a different part of the world, so autism is also the same thing which you need to consult uh, like um, 
the first thing is as it is diagnosed by your parents or I mean, your parents, or you can say like your teachers or the people who are in surrounding to you. So I think for the autism, it is also the, the same thing that it's a condition and uh, it can be treated with the, uh, sometime is, as the medical doctor, they can say the, the, this answer very best, but yeah, sometime it can be treated as well, but it's a condition, it's not a, a complete disability because uh, there are a lot of uh, people who we have seen that uh, they have uh, autism and still they are working in different platforms. Uh, okay, uh, we have one more question. How we can deal better with autism disability? It's not a, more about uh, psychological disorder. Um, for the autism, uh, as you know that, uh, as, as I told a bit earlier in this session, that autism is one of the most uh, you can say it's the most technical thing as well. We as a we as a the normal colleague, or you can say as a normal employee, or let's say as a their brother or sister, what we can do a better is to know their nature and attitude. Okay. And for the autism, it's, it's a medical condition. So the best thing it can be treated by the doctor. But normally uh, you have to take care of their mood swings. So their mood swing is very important. And um, you have to be quite, uh, you know, when it comes to the communication, you need to be to make your things quite simple with them because uh, autism is something which is quite a technical thing. And I think it, it needs quite more explanation how to deal with them. But normally, as we said, that uh, uh, you have to be quite easy with them when it comes to the communication or the speaking of the different matters. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we have one question. Okay, um, how do you manage differently able people, disabled people in the workplace in UAE? Do they get any spe special treatment support from the companies? Uh, yeah, the most important thing is uh, it, when you are going to hire as uh, an HR or as in a company, uh, a person with disability. So these things are covered in the country. Okay, so these things you let them show in the contract. First of all, the person is quite open about their disability that I have this kind of disability and I'm just professional. So uh, in the workplace, they give them job as per their nature of disability. Like for example, if I cannot move, so they will give me a desktop, they will give me a PC, so well, I'll be doing some document work. So it means to say that in UAE, uh, they take care of you as it's also in the law. First of all, they are giving the spaces for the UAE national, but along with that, uh, each and every individual can apply. But yes, the most specific take care we can sense uh, from this thing, they, they will give you a job as for the nature of your disability. So yes, of course, they take care of them. They are ensuring that you are having your parking zone. Okay, they are ensuring that, um, uh, I mean, they are ensuring your uh, disabled, uh, you can say like the, the wheelchair, the assistive device, or the way to the, to the car, or let's say to the parking. So yes, there are so many things that they are ensuring, especially, yeah, of course, their washroom. So these things, if you have seen in many places, you must need the washrooms or something like that. So when it comes to the welfare facilities or stuff like that, so they make sure, but uh, they, will, they are giving them job as per the nature of their disability. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, any reference for the special con consideration for people of determination from ILO? Yes, there is. Uh, we have one more uh, question. How to communicate the way to respect and take care of people of determination to all employees in any organization? Uh, Mr. Afsky, please repeat the question. How to communicate the way to respect and take care of people of determination? How to communication, way of communication? Okay, so how we have to communicate, right? Yeah. I think uh, uh, if uh, as an organization point of view or as an HSC professional view, uh, I know this is not a, a quite HSC topic, but I think we can make some kind of training awarenesses, okay? And uh, when it comes to the communication, so uh, communication with people with challenges, uh, it basically, even here in the UAE, uh, you must need to undergo for some classes like as I said, like ASL, BSL. So communication uh, with some sign language is very important because if I'm, I'm not a guy who is quite familiar with the challenges, so I think it can make the communication more harder. So normally um, for these things, we can go for the basic classes for the ASL. And I think you can also find these things around the YouTube, the basics, um, 
sign languages like American sign languages or the BSL sign languages. So I think uh, we can dedicate some people to learn those sign languages, for example, on the reception, okay? Or uh, let's say uh, some dedicated people, like we, we, we can give them some extra time to learn those basic signages. And uh, that's how it can be helpful. So from the YouTube, we can get the help and from um, from the disability, yes, X, so we can get yeah. the help, yeah. Yeah. So okay. Is, how is there it? any policy uh, must be placed? Um, here. Sorry, if uh, you can repeat oh, because there, I got some. There, uh, there should be any policy for for people like uh, people with the determination. Uh, yeah, of course, there should be policy because, you know, even if, uh, as for the government perspective, uh, you can see that you can get fines and, uh, you, know, you know, like if, if you are going to discriminate someone so they can put a case against you, so those things. But as, as for the policy perspective, yes, uh, there are uh, like the bigger organization who can accommodate the people with challenges. So yeah, they have different policies in which the main aim is to not to discriminate the people with challenges. And the main aim is that they're part of our community they are part of us, they have the same brand. I mean, like, uh, just the same messages in policy that they are just like us. You don't have to underestimate them, and they are the nation of our community. They are the strength of our community. So that is the policy. And I think, uh, yes, it is, but in the bigger organization, uh, very rarely you will see in the, uh, you can say, um, uh, in, in, in a small organization, but in the bigger organization, yes, they have, especially if you go to the hotel policy. Thank, so, yeah, uh, thank you. We have one more question. Uh, how can we know if someone is uh, suffering from uh, emotional disability and is their mentally or emotionally situation varies from time to time? Um, there's a training, we call it psychological first aid, right? And psychological first aid is related to your emotion. Emotional disorder is something which you can get to know about the person with the passage of time. It is not like that I met the guy and directly I will let the, I mean, I, I will be able to know about his emotional disorder. But these things can be judged with the passage of time. I think as an emotional part of you, um, yes, you, can let the person more comfortable so he can share the views, the ideas with you. And I think for the most important thing for that is to see the um, doctor or you can say the psychologist. So I think they can make uh, some work on their behalf better. Okay, uh, we have one question. Is stammering a disability and what kind of treatment is required? I think the Okay. I think stammer is not a disability, it's only a condition. And the treatment is only uh, to get the uh, person uh, some practice. And for that practice, we have a lot of uh, institutes, we have a lot of schools, so where they can go and they can practice the thing because the doctor or the psychologist, they're having different sessions, they're having different therapy, and that's where they can get rid of this thing. But it's not a disability, it's just only a condition and it can be treated and it is curable with the passage of time. Mm, okay, uh, one more question from Ziaidris. In the case that the people with serious mental disorders are more precisely due to occupational diseases like stress and depression, sometimes can become serious, serious concern for the people at work site. What are the considerations in this regard? I, I would suggest uh, even in organization where I work, I will not discuss them, but yeah. Uh, the most important thing that they are communicating the people, as you say, like, um, the mental illnesses or you can say the stress or depression the best thing is to let your people collect and just go through the behavioral based safety where and just give them option like the communication you have to establish communication with them and they have to share the idea with you so the so the best solution for the people who are going under depression or stuff like that is first of all you need to go with the complete behavioral based safety session because why it is completely a kind of topic where you can discuss about your ideas and how they can behave with you or how they can show the attitude toward their work etc so i think bbs is something which is very important and apart from that you need to establish a proper communication with them so the way they will share and care so that's how you can reduce it to some extent but you do not let the person in quite because you know you have to make them engage you have to make some session with with them and I think it's completely depending on the organization how they are facilitating their own employees but um, yeah you have to be open as an HSC profession I would suggest like you have to make such kind of even your company or in your organization where you are allowing the people to share their ideas 
when we talk about the communication that it or consultation that it should be from both sides so i think in their proper toolbox talk or in proper presentation you can let them and you can also allow them to discuss even as if they have something which is back in their own personal life so with such care and share i think uh, the chances of mental stress can be reduced up to a bit so um, i think uh, this is my take uh, on it uh, we have one more question is there any symptoms of epilepsy and seizure uh, the epilepsy epilepsy is something uh, even as per the doctor they still have not recognized the, the symptoms right uh, but sometimes people say it is because of some huge depression sometimes people say it is some genetic kind of thing because we can relate it to genetic as well because you have seen babies sometimes even they are having epileptic seizures right and uh, sometimes we have the people but there is no proper signages of the epilepsy or we can say the symptoms um, but yeah if you will go back to the uh, first day training even uh, uh, you, you have heard about them that those who have epilepsy please make sure you need to be with them okay and um, you need to keep them at recovery position as well so there is no proper signages of the epileptic symptoms or people who are having seizure because it could be genetic as well if we are going to if we are going in this way that the people who are having epilepsy has depression or you can say those other thing then how come the baby can have also the epileptic seizure so there is no proper signages of the epileptic seizure but yes the doctors are suggesting actually they are giving some medication as well sometime but uh, there Thank is no you. proper signages as well thank you is any percentage uh, uh, recommended by the government to hire such people um i would say i we need to uh, research this thing because uh, to be honest like uh, even i was also looking for this thing but uh, normally in the law in uae they they are saying that yes the people with disability first of all the priority is uae national that they have the same place they have i mean they have the same right to work in the public even in to work in the government position but uh, yeah we will find uh, we will try to find the answer that what is the percentage of it so we will have to look on this thing okay we have one final question is there any health evaluation being procedure and standard uh, for the people with challenges yeah um health evaluation standard uh, yes there are as as i said in the bigger organization that if we have a people with challenges so there are the doctors who are there okay who are completely assessing their um, the, the the health issues so uh, yeah it depends on organization who are hiring so uh, they have health evaluation for the people with challenges normally if you are encountering something that please make sure you need to keep those thing in your know, hst policy or in other uh, important thing so i think hr or the people who are hiring them uh, they can make the best thing on that side uh, thank you very much uh, uh, shahzad uh, thank you uh, thanks to everyone who attended the webinar and the mic is with uh, sayed now thank you um hello everyone uh, will not take uh, much time uh, special thanks to shahzad for spending the time and giving us uh, this outstanding presentation here uh, thank you very much anthony from the uk uh, from arranging all of these stuffs and keeping eyes uh, on each moment of this session getting in people and looking after for the whole event so special thanks to you uh special thanks to my committee for being uh, so volunteer uh to this event and to the upcoming events as well um apart from this uh thanks from the bottom of our hearts from the committee members to the people those have joined us throughout this session and remained with us so professional so silent so patient uh so thank you everyone before i conclude please note that there will be a survey soon or later uh, you will receive it through your emails we will appreciate your feedback because your feedback uh, are always very good for us it gives us what to do what should not to be done in future um there is another event which is coming uh, through our member council and we will be collaborating to that uh, so you everyone is requested to uh, to log in and to register i believe you received the mailer Uh, and we will be promoting through our LinkedIn page as well. Uh, that's it from my end. Anthony, would you like to say anything before I conclude? No, just it was a pleasure as always. So thank you.
Thank you very much, uh, guys, and see you, inshallah, in the next event. Bye-bye. Have a great night. Bye-bye.